Welcome to Triumphant Victorious Reminders with Teresa Ann on this Heavenly Wit Monday. This is a podcast and YouTube channel where you will find out that the greatest reminders of our triumphant victory is in the person who is Jesus. You will realize that in him, nothing else will change our lives in such a way that is so glorious and eternal, except Jesus. And that's what this podcast and YouTube channel is all about. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about casting the first stone, as it says in John 8, 7. So that is what's coming up next on today's Heavenly Wit Monday. In John 8, 7, so when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. So here is the scene played out in my mind. The door swings open by force as they are caught in the very act of adultery. She screams in horror as she not only knows her demise of death at this very moment, but they are dragging her outside like an animal being led to the slaughter. As she screams, she does everything in her power to hide her frail, naked body. She kicks, she screams, weeping with little dignity that she had. As they drag her, She tries to defend herself as the men pull her by the hair and beat her while cursing her. The lowest blow of disgust upon a human being as they spit on her. I can just hear the stone blood thirsty voices shouting at her. You no good waste of trash. You are a dead woman. They throw her around like a rag doll, not caring that she might be someone's daughter, someone's sister, and even someone's mother. As they scream and taunt her, they throw her at the feet of Jesus, their judgment setting forth her death sentence. They say with their noses in the air as though they had never sinned before, teacher, This woman was caught in the very act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? And that is referenced in John 8, 4 through 11. They wanted to use this moment against Jesus. However, Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer. So he stood up again and said, all right. Stone her, but let those who have never sinned throw the first stone. He stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When her accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to her, Where are your accusers now? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And then Jesus said, Neither do I. Go and just keep living like you've been living. He didn't say that, did he? He said, Go and and sin no more. His love empowered her to leave her situation that she was so comfortable in, to get up, walk away with confidence and value, knowing that sin wanted to destroy her, but God's love wanted her to become who she was always meant to be. And that is his daughter. I love this story 
to realize there was a crowd gathered around Jesus at the temple as he taught. They eagerly feasted on every word he spoke. And then suddenly, this riotous scene interrupts the scene of him teaching as the crowd watches mercy unfold like they had never seen before. The Pharisees and Sadducees violently brought this woman to him as he was teaching. She had an audience of many spectators. But I'm so intoxicated by Jesus when he said, You who have not sinned, cast the first stone. Yet the only person who would have been able to cast that stone was him. He was the only one who had no sin, who could have exercised his right to cast it. Yet he did not. Instead, he chose love, not just any love, but God's powerful love that transforms. He chose to mercifully take her by the hand, dust the dirt off her tear-stained cheeks, and I would imagine he took the cloak off himself and wrapped it around her, then embraced her as he held her head close to his chest, comforting her. Now again, this is just something that I imagine. Something she had never experienced before. A warm embrace with no intentions of wanting her body in return. She received, for the first time, a pure embrace from God in the form of a man. She experienced unfailing love from someone who could have rightfully stoned her, yet he chose to stand up for her. He didn't embrace what she had done, which was the sin of adultery. However, he embraced her. I want, need, and must do the same. I want to embrace the hurting, even though they may be called the throwaways of society or labeled as scum, even by the world. I get to do what Jesus did. That's what following him looks like. He is our example of loving the person, but not condoning sin. For he is righteous and just. Lord, I don't want to be the voice of condemnation when I was shown mercy and compassion by you. I want and know that I get to be the voice of love, your love, embracing the hurting, who long to know what it's like to be held for a moment, finding out that nothing will be asked in return, resulting in transformation for your glory. This life must be about paying it forward with God's love, not just our love, but his love to someone else. The love that was shed upon me must be revealed through me over others because I am a follower of Jesus. What a triumphant, victorious reminder in Christ that he is the stone that was rejected. And yet, he didn't cast himself against her. Instead, he embraced her and he honored her and he brought back her value from his father to her. That's pretty cool. Thank you so much for joining me on this Heavenly Wit Monday via my podcast and YouTube channel, Triumphant victorious reminders with Teresa Ann. Thank you so much for joining me on triumphant victorious reminders with Teresa Ann on this heavenly wit Monday. 
This is what I would love for you to do. Hit the like button if you liked this video. And if you didn't, it's okay. But if you liked it, like this video, share it on your social media, with your friends, with your family, and comment on this video and let me know either what you've learned or perhaps what you would love for me to talk about on this show or what have you been learning from the Holy Spirit in your circumstances, especially the ones that have been difficult. And remember what this show is all about, bold inspiration, revealing God's goodness, seeing with heavenly wit to see mission fields in the midst of battlefields.